Okay, Christmas is officially over. I've taken down all the Christmas uh, lights and things from outside and uh, boxed them up. They're in the attic and the last thing I'm tearing down is the Christmas tree. And that'll be it. <sighs> kind of cooled down a little bit today uh, for us. Um, breezy, sunny, blue skies, white puffy clouds, and uh, I don't know what the temperature is right now. I'll say 70-ish. Um, I've got the lanai uh, doors open, and um, the breeze is going through here. I'm drinking a latte. <sighs> By the way, some... Cheers, everybody. <sighs> Hope everybody's having a good New Year's. I got an email from um, somebody. A lot of questions. Don't know if I can answer them all sufficiently, but uh, starts out by saying, Hi, my husband and I were recently at the villages on a lifestyle visit last week. I'm not exactly sure when I got this email because uh, I haven't really been answering anything for the last couple weeks. We've had some uh, priority things around here to take care of and so my emails and and things has been kind of put on hold. It says, unfortunately, our schedules did not match up for a meet and greet. I didn't know I was going to do that. Um, I did have a list of questions that I had intended to ask you about. Perhaps you would be so kind as to comment by email or YouTube video. Well, whenever it comes to like questions that's going to require detailed answers of some sort or a long answer, so to speak, I usually do it by video because... It's faster and easier than typing out a thousand words. Um, I'm just, I, I'm all about easy peasy. I didn't realize we were having a meet and greet. Let me back it up here. No, there's no attached message on here. Um, I didn't know we were having a meet and greet. But if we, if we were, um, just know that I had some more important things to, I had to do says, do people put manure on their lawns in the winter? They do here in California and it stinks up the whole neighborhood. Uh, no, not here. If they was going to put manure on anything, it would probably be the flower beds. And the kind of manure that they would use here in the villages would be the kind you go to the store and buy in a bag. It's usually, um, and it's really usually not 100% manure either. It's uh, usually mixed with like peat dirt or something like that and you put it around your flowers. Um, what's it called, black cow? That's pretty popular. I see uh, people that'll buy the bags of black cow and put it around their flowers and whatever. And I suppose if you wanted to take uh, some kind of a spreader or whatever and put it on your grass, you could probably do that. It won't smell, not, not the stuff in the bag. Um, but nobody does that, no. Um, Florida grass is not like probably California grass when I, I used to go to California every week I did it for years I've been all over the state of California from Sacramento uh, used to go there a lot um, because long history short history I'll say when they were building the MGM Grand Hotel uh, my partner and I were instrumental in delivering all of the furniture for their rooms, their hotel rooms. At that time, they were booked at 5,005 rooms, which was the largest hotel in the world. And all the furniture for that hotel, for the rooms, came out of Jasper, Indiana. Jasper Furniture. And I delivered a ton of it out there. Well, when we got done there, we'd take a trailer out, we'd drop it, we'd spend a day or two there while they were unloading the trailer and then we picked this empty trailer up, which was a reefer, 
And then generally speaking, we go over the hill, so to speak, and go over into Sacramento and we pick up stuff. It could be anything from groceries to uh, water beds and bring it back to the Midwest so we could go back down to Jasper and get another load of furniture and take it back out to MGM Grand Hotel. So I've been all over the northern part of California. I went to Salinas, went there a lot to pick up groceries in Salinas, California. I've been to Castroville. Um, yeah, I, I'm very familiar with the northern half of California. And then with UPS, we went to Fontana, California as a team, a friend of mine and me, for years. Um, and we went out there every week. Two days out, two days back, three days off. And sometimes out of Fontana, they only had one trailer. I pulled pups for UPS. <coughs> they only had one trailer coming back to the Indianapolis area. And so we would have to take one and an empty, so to speak, and go to some other California terminal, UPS terminal, and get that second trailer to bring back to Indianapolis. Uh, so we've been all over. We've been to Orange County. We went to, I'm trying to think of some places we went to, the LA terminal. Uh, Blythe, um, oh gosh, I can't think of that one town up there by 15 and 40, right there. Um, well, whatever it is. And we, we've been to that one. We've been to uh, some other terminals around California and picked up trailers. Um, I can't think of all the places. Anyway, so I'm very familiar with the northern half of California and the southern half of California which to me is a huge difference. For those of you that's never been to California, the northern half of California to me is much more desirable than the southern half of California. Um, tourism wise, it probably doesn't make no difference. If you was going to live there to me, it's a huge difference. So anyway, uh, no manures and lawns here. They, they, everything's done by, by biodegradable chemicals because they don't want any runoff to come off our yards and to go into the swamps and the retention ponds that could destroy the wildlife there. So all the chemicals they used on our lawns are all biodegradable type chemicals. Um, that's why in my district, you're allowed to wash your car in the driveway, but it has to be done with certain biodegradable chemicals that doesn't harm the environment. Because all the water that runs off of your driveway goes down the street, goes into the curbside drain, and all of our water, surface water, drains off into a retention pond or a swamp somewhere. So, you can't use things like dish soap to wash your car, legally. I suppose you can do anything you want until you get caught. But for the average human being here, uh, we do respect the wildlife, um, and we don't want to do anything to harm it. And so we usually use the biodegradable soaps and things you can buy that are about the same price to wash our cars, or do what I do. Just go to the car wash, do it there. It's their problem, and then I don't have to worry about it. Uh, my wife, when she goes shopping, that's what she does. She goes through the car wash, the kind of thing that you drive through, or they hook you up to it and take you through it. And she goes to a no-touch car wash somewhere up north, which is, I like the no-touch car washes. And the car comes back looking brand new. I don't know what it costs, 15 bucks or something. And so, you know, hey, that, I'm good. I'm retired. I don't need to do all that other kind of work. So anyway, the next question is, if your leg becomes injured, and you know, I assume you're talking something like knee replacement surgery, which we have a lot of that done here, and you cannot drive, what are your transportation options in the villages? Well, um, I don't know that you ever will have that problem because you say we came to the villages, which I'm assuming you have a better half or a partner of some kind so if you have a leg injury, I'm assuming your partner can drive you around and take you where you need to go. So if, if you're coming as a single person to live here and you have a leg injury, uh, just know that depending on what neighborhood you move into, I can only speak from my neighborhood, 
um, and the other neighborhood that I lived in. The other one was a patio villa neighborhood, and this one is basically a designer home neighborhood. And um, our neighbors take, help take care of one another. Now, I don't know all my neighbors here. There are 600 and some homes in this neighborhood. I don't know them all. I ain't going to pretend to. But uh, I know quite a few here. And of the few that I know, uh, we help them. They help us. And that's just what we do. Um, we also have a village taxi cab service. We also have Uber, if you want to use Uber. We have Lyft. L, what is it? L-Y-F-T or something like that. Lyft. Uh, but, and you have your golf cart. And golf carts are so much easier to drive than cars when you have leg problems. They are. To get in, get out, there's no doors. You just slide in, slide out. Uh, in most cases, most businesses have special golf cart parking. That only golf carts are supposed to be there. That doesn't mean that every nutball that comes from other places in the United States has no idea what that sign means when it says golf cart parking only. They might park their car in there, but uh, other than those nuts, um, generally speaking, you can get anywhere you need to go in a golf cart. That includes the doctors, the hospitals, grocery stores, restaurants, wherever you need to go, you can get there by golf cart. Um, if you are unable to cook, is there a meal delivery service such as Meals on Wheels? Well, once again, you said we came down for a lifestyle visit. So if something happens to you and you can't cook, your partner could cook, right? Um, but at the very least, uh, Meals on Wheels, I think there is one. A church or something like that here has a Meals on Wheels program thing. I don't know how it works, probably by donations. Um, there's also the yellow truck that goes around What's it called? Um, oh gosh, I can't think of that food truck. If you like order, it's like the Fuller Brush guy years ago. Um, there's this yellow truck, refrigerator truck that goes around. I want to say Seifert's. No, that's not it. But anyway, you can order things, frozen foods off of him. Uh, shrimps and steaks and whatever, whatever. And then like once a week or once every other week or whatever it is, he comes to the neighborhood and he brings you this stuff. Of course, you pay for it, but he brings you this stuff. And you still got to cook it, I suppose. Um, but, you know, Meals on Wheels, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's probably one here. There are so many charitable organizations here, I just can't imagine not having a, a program for elderly people that are bedridden and just can't, you know, fend for themselves. So I'm sure there's one here, but I got to play dumb to it because I'm not sure what it is or where it's at. Uh, how does the villages handle homeless people? I did not see one while I was there. This is a retirement community. We don't have homeless people here. Um, and any homeless person that would come wandering through, uh, you know, begging for money or something like that, uh, it would get he would get turned around really quick. We have a community watch uh, program here that's all over the villages, and they drive through your neighborhood at least three times a day, and they've got their eye out for all kinds of things that are just um, out of whack, that just not right, doesn't look right, and uh, they will address it. They will call the sheriff in, and he will check it out. Uh, I know when I was working the gates one night, about 3 o'clock in the morning, I saw two guys walking down the golf cart path at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and let's just say that um, it just didn't look right. Something about it didn't look right. Well, when they went down past where the golf cart tunnel was at, they turned like they were going to go in the tunnel. And I, I could see the tunnel clearly. I watched these guys. I never seen them come out of the tunnel. And so I called Community Watch. And that's what I'm supposed to do as a, as a guard there. And so Community Watch came out. He walked over with a flashlight. He walked over to the tunnel. It was maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes later, something like that. Uh, I seen a sheriff light down there. And uh, the guys were being loaded up into the car. So I don't know what happened there. I don't know if they were homeless. I don't know if they were wanted by the law. I don't know. But if anything looks out of the ordinary here, <clears throat> just know as a resident you can call community watch 
and they will address the situation. Does district government impose new taxes from time to time like gas tax, cleanup tax, or water tax? A water tax? Where do you live at where they got a water tax? Um, cleanup tax. I don't even know what that is. Never heard of it. Gas tax, that's, that's the state and the county does a gas tax and that all has to go through a program, a process to be approved. But um, no, our district government, you remember you talk about the CDD? Uh, every district has their own CDD um, supervisors. It's not really a government. But um, we have district rules. I'm in CDD 10. I have a CDD 10 rules. If you live in CDD 2, you'll have CDD 2 rules. Uh, and their rules can be a little bit different than my rules. So that's why I've always told people, get a copy of whatever district you're going to move in. Get a copy of those rules. You can get them on the internet, www.thevillages.net. Over to the left, there's a list of things to click on. One of those things over there, and I'm not sure which one it is, has a list of all the CDD rules. You just click on it and, and you can read them. And uh, find out what they are. Uh, and they, they vary from here to there. Uh, like, here's a good example, where I'm at. You're not allowed to put a for sale sign in your front yard. No real estate company is allowed to come out and put a for sale sign in your front yard. And if it happens, all it's going to take is one complaint and uh, the, the, they'll call the uh, probably the uh, community watch guy to come out, verify it. And then at that point, they'll get a hold of that real estate company and tell them that sign's got to come out of the yard. And if they don't do it within a certain amount of time, then the uh, community watch guy will take that sign out of that front yard. And I don't know what they do with them. I don't know if they take them somewhere and drop them off, dispose of them. I don't know. Uh, but then where I'm at, if you have a house for sale, the sign has a size, a limited size it can be. Like I want to say 12 by 12 or maybe 15 by 15, something like that, inches. It has to be on the inside of your house in, on a window. It can't be on the outside. And I see them break that rule all the time outside realtors will come in and they'll take a for sale sign and they tape it on the front of a garage door which technically is you're not supposed to do that but unless somebody complains about it they get by with it so just know what the rules are that's all they don't impose gas taxes they don't impose water tax I don't even know what that is water tax um, the CDD may be able to impose um, a certain price, uh, a price change per gallon or per liter or per whatever, per thousand gallons of, um, of uh, the uh, water that you use to water your grass. That's a different water. That's non-potable water. That comes out of the swamps. And I think that each district is in control of that. Uh, but our, I've been here four years and I don't think our water prices ever went up. The drinkable water, I believe, is uh, Sumter County, which may be Wildwood. I'm not sure about that. So that's another water bill. It's all, I think, comes together. Uh, but I don't think our water has went up hardly at all. And I did a video on how much all this stuff costs. So don't ask me. Find a video. Uh, with me and Sue sitting outside and we did a whole video of what property taxes cost, what water cost, what the electric cost, all that stuff. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, it appears the developer controls most things. Does it feel like living under a dictatorship? Absolutely not. He is under control when a neighborhood is being developed because he owns all them houses. He owns the property. He owns everything there. Until he sells one of those houses, he owns it. Now, for the first year or two years, I forget what it is, <clears throat> that whole district is under the developer's control. Uh, just to make sure rules are being adhered to. The, your yard is being kept up. It has to be edged. That's usually part of the rules. Um, all these different things. So I can only assume that 
you know, after that, you're going to elect supervisors and then that district is turned over to your supervisors. Well, I had a change of battery. It was flashing at me. Um, what were we talking about? Supervisors and districts, yeah. For about the first year, maybe two years, he, uh, he appoints uh, district supervisors in a new area. And then after that, after a period of time, a year, two years, I think it's the first year, by the second year, the residents in that area will elect, I think it's two, two supervisors. And at that point, that district is turned over to those supervisors to, um, um, to handle whatever it is they handle. I suppose they handle complaints, they handle uh, uh, rule violations, they handle um, um, things. Um, I, I, uh, I never even considered doing it. I was asked one time a long time ago, and um, I was a union representative for a couple of years for the UAW, for Saturn Corporation out of Tennessee, for a matter of fact, when I was down there. And um, uh, just a, one of those jobs where it's, you're constantly ridiculed, you're constantly yelled at, you're constantly um, fingers pointed at you, it's your fault, uh, why didn't you do this, why didn't you do that? Uh, but yet nobody else wants to do that job. It is the biggest thankless job that you'll, you'll work constantly at. And um, I'll never do something like that again. So being a district supervisor here kind of reminds me of that. I have to listen to all the complaints and uh, have no power to actually get anything done um, except constantly try and try and try and then when you finally do get something done instead of getting a thank you or something from people for your work what you get is stuff like what well, took you long enough or what took so long I'm not interested in that let me see what else we got here it said like, like a dictatorship. Let me just say this about the developer. I don't agree with everything that's going on here. Uh, obviously, if you watch my channel, I mean, I point out some things that I think are wrong. I think things could be better on certain things. But the other side of that coin is the villages goes back to his uh, grandfather, Harold Schwartz, that started this whole, whole thing. But then his dad, uh, Gary Morris, had the vision of expanding it to what it is today. What an idea. I can't fault anybody, you know, for doing what they do, uh, to have the concept that this place has got that's grown the way it's grown, and it continues to grow, and I see it growing uh, far beyond this year anyway, with businesses moving in and and the the way things they tweak it every time they move to a new area they tweak it a little bit better a little bit better a little bit better so yeah I don't see it uh, going anywhere I think it's a good uh, I think it's a good uh, the the whole idea of of this active adult community and that's what it's all about everything in the village is about activity uh, for health dancing at the square activity. Uh, bocce ball. It might be a low-end activity for elderly people, but it's still bend over using your arm to throw the ball. You got to walk down to the other end. It's all about activity. Tennis, pickleball, ain't golf. It's all about activity. I can see this being the prototype of communities uh, be, that may be developed elsewhere in our country. Um, and of course, Sun City was probably the start of all this. You can't, uh, you can't look at any of these places and not go back to the original designer of an adult activity, and that's Del Webb. He started it all. So uh, the villages tweaked it. Like I said, they always tweak things. So I don't take nothing away from the family. Family's done a tremendous job here with home design, interior design. Uh... I just have a problem sometimes with the rules and how they're um, enforced, if they get enforced. Um, that's, that's my thing. 
It may not be your thing. It's my thing. I bought here because of the rules uh, and specific rules. And um, it just it irritates me to death when I see certain rules broken time and time and time again. And I'm the guy that sits back thinking, well, someday I'll complain about it and it'll get taken care of. But then nobody complains about it and it never gets taken care of. And I don't want to be the guy to, to do the complaining. I really don't. But, uh, and I haven't done it yet. Uh, I, I, uh, I won't go up to the district office and file a formal complaint against something without going over to that person face to face. And here's another thing. People are always saying, we don't like this anonymous complaining thing. It's wrong. You know, if they got a complaint, they should come to me face to face. I have. And here's what happens there. Argument. Right away you say something to a guy and he goes, well, what's wrong with it? I don't see a problem with it. Well, I know you don't see a problem with it. I'm just here to tell you that it's against the district rules. I got a problem with it. Here's the reason why I have a problem with it. And I'm just asking you to, kindly to take care of it or I am going to go up and file a formal complaint. Well, you do that, and me and you is going to have a problem. It goes on. So the anonymous complaint, yeah, I think I like it. Because then there's no argument, then they, nobody ever really knows, and, uh, you know, that's the end of that. So, anyway, let's get on with this. Uh, did you ever consider retiring in California or Arizona instead of Florida? Uh, what were your deciding factors when you moved from Indiana? Well, I don't know what the deciding factor was other than weather and activity and free golf. That would probably be my three main things. Um, I knew 25 years ago that I was moving down here. And um, my wife knew 25 years ago we were probably going to retire here. I probably checked out, and I'm not exaggerating a bit, probably 50 different retirement communities. Um, and they all had one thing in common on a hot day because I come down in the summertime when it's at the hottest. I wanted to see how different retirement communities were in the heat of the day. Uh, everybody comes down in the wintertime. You know, you know, the wintertime weather here, there's no explanation about that, right? I mean, everybody knows. Everybody wants to be here in the wintertime. But what about the summer? So we went to all these different retirement communities at uh, noon, one, two o'clock in the afternoon, and we would drive through them. And they all had one thing in common. You very seldom ever saw anybody outside, very seldom. Um, the pickleball courts were empty. The swimming pools were empty. Uh, you just drive around, there was just nothing. And whenever we would have a tour of a place from an associate there, I'd always ask him, so where's everybody at? Oh, they're all home. They don't come out until the sun goes down. Later this evening, they'll all be out walking and, and doing their thing, but right now it's too hot. We came to the villages, and you know that story. I found this place by accident. But then after we started coming down here for a day or two, and then kind of checking the place out, you know the one thing we noticed? Now, this is back when Spanish Springs was the only square. There was no other square. But they still had golf courses and things like that associated with that square area. We'd go out and we'd go to the pools. Uh, we would go to the, uh, the golf courses. We would go downtown to square at night. Actually, five afternoon in, in summertime. Five in the afternoon is hot. And the sun is out in full force at five in the afternoon. And that's when the square starts. But we would go to all these different things. And the one thing that they had here that nobody had anywhere else. People was out. People, this place was full of people. People was out and about and doing their thing. And so I think we decided um, after the, the first couple of times we actually rented a home. I really never ever done a lifestyle visit. I always felt like that was probably a set up deal because it was different than it is now. Back then you had a thing called Village Bucks. And I always thought it was kind of a setup deal, and I wanted to see what the villages was like on the inside. So I rented a house for a week that had a golf cart. And we came down, and uh, of course they signed over the resident passes to us for that week. And um, that's, what, that's what we did. We just immersed ourselves into it for a week to get a good feel of what was going on. So we knew a long time ago this is where we was going to be. Have I ever considered Arizona? Yes, at one time. 
a couple friends of mine retired in Scottsdale. Very big popular retirement area, Scottsdale, Arizona. And I went out there and we looked around uh, in the winter time, once again, the winter time weather out there, there's no really explaining it. It's nice in the day, cold at night. Uh, we were out there in, um, I want to say, late December for a week or two. And uh, in the daytime, it was like in the 70s, great. Nighttime got very cold. I mean, in the 40s and 30s, like every night that I was there. It could have been a fluke, I don't know that, but it was cold. And I just decided, I don't want to, I don't want to leave the cold and go live in the wintertime someplace where it's cold. I don't want to do that. I want someplace where it's fairly warm. So Arizona was out. California, uh, I never considered California at all. Uh, the northern part of California, if I was going to retire somewhere, it would be the northern half of California. <clears throat> the southern half of California doesn't appeal to me at all. Too many political problems out there. Uh, the price of homes and things out there is astronomical. I don't, know, I don't even know about property taxes and whatever. I just didn't get into that. I went to the Palm Springs area and checked out a couple places down there. Um, Palm Springs itself is okay. It's got a lot of history behind it. You know, Frank Sinatra had a house there. Liberace had a house there. There's a lot of history there. But to live there uh, in the wintertime, you know, I probably could have done that in the winter. I'm not sure about taxes and all that, what, what was available. I don't, I don't know about home prices. I never really got that either. Uh, but we just decided not to. Uh, we just kept coming back to the villages. And so, uh, and at the time, our original plan was to be snowbirds. Six months here, six months there. And I was going to choose Florida because I'd be here six months. I was going to choose Florida as my place of residence because they don't have a state income tax here. And for, um, you know, 401k money you pull out or investment money you pull out or pensions that you may receive every month, that adds up to a little bit of a savings. So that's why we chose here. And I haven't regretted it, you know, at all. Uh, we're here, we're, we're still here, and I intend to be here for a while. But no, I never considered California at all. Um, has a developer imposed landmark status? I don't even know what that is on any homes, which means you can never modify the exterior of a house. I don't know what landmark status is. I, that must be something different where you're, where you live. I never heard of that here. Um, you can't modify the exterior of any home in the villages anyway without ARC approval. That's Architectural Review Committee. There are some things you can do that you don't need ARC approval. Uh, but if you're talking about, you said modify the home. I don't know what that means either. If you talk about adding on a room, adding on a second story, adding on uh, to the house, making the garage bigger, all of that, anything structural, all of that has to be approved by ARC. Do not do anything to your house without that approval. Uh, they will make you tear it down and move it or whatever. Um, there are certain restrictions on each and every home here. How close can you build to the, to the boundary line? Um, how close can you build to a street? Um, there's just rules. And so you don't want, well, for example, we had a neighbor over here on a corner lot, big lot. They wanted to put in a swimming pool. Most people do that buy a corner lot. That's why they buy the corner lot is to have the room to put in a swimming pool. So they go to ARC, give them the plans. ARC comes back and tells them, you can't build a pool that big there because from the street in, there was an easement, probably for utilities, that they didn't know. And that easement said, for a pool that size, you can't, you can't build it in there. So they had to make the pool smaller than what they really wanted in order to stay within that, shy of that easement. So that's what I'm talking about. Go to ARC, get that approval, because if you don't, if they'd have built that pool without that approval and they were in that easement, eventually they're going to come around and knock on their door and tell them, you got to tear that thing down. You can't be out there. I'm just telling you, just to cover your own butt, go to ARC, get the approval. But nobody here, including me, can just willy-nilly 
decide I'm going to rip the shingles off of this house and change the color of them shingles. I got black shingles. I think it holds in too much heat. I'm ripping them shingles off and I'm going to put on yellow. That's an ARC decision. <coughs> Everything here has a reason for being what it is so that the communities blend. So not to say you can't take black off, put yellow on, get ARC's approval first or there could be a serious problem. So that being said, I hope I answered your questions. I hope it helps out. This is not a dictatorship here. This is your property, your house. You do what you want, but you have district rules you got to abide by depending on what district you're in. Get the rules, read them, and know them. And then any major structural changes you want to make outside your house, go to ARC, get the approval, just to cover your butt, if nothing else. It's free, and that way, when it gets done, you're basically home free. So, okay, after that, I'm going to enjoy my New Year's wine. And I will see you guys on the other side.